Hi, this is Richard, and welcome to the fourth and final tutorial. Um, if you made it this far, congratulations. This has been a lot of material. Um, hope you're excited and, and glad to learn all these things. Um, this last one we're going to finish up and and talk about all the rest of the advanced instruments, all the effects as, as much as possible, uh, the major effects, I guess you could say, and, um, and some of the advanced features that you have. Um, so this is going to be a lot of great stuff. So first, we're going to start out with talking about four of the of the libraries that are not in uh, Logic or not in East-West. You buy them separately. So the first one is Vienna. It comes from um, you. You have to open it up in uh, EXS24. So you go here. Now we've already. Um, downloaded it so it just shows up in the XS24 that's what it plays through you have two uh, folders gigan instruments I'm not exactly sure um, what the uh, distinction is but um, you have those two folders now all you gotta do is just pick an instrument load and and let it load when you want to play through it I don't have a MIDI keyboard hooked up to it right now so what I can do is I just press the caps lock key and I can play it through the computer keyboard um, it's kind of hard when you're recording because you have to turn it off, press R, turn it back on to record. So that gets a little bit of a nuisance, but um, it's really handy if you don't have a MIDI keyboard on hand. Now, so the Vienna Symphonic Library are just some decent orchestral sounds. Um, and some of these I are, have not been uh, unzipped. You have to unzip them. See, if you don't have the arrow right here, you have to unzip them. So if I click on that, then this is what happens. Um, I guess this is just how it's been organized. Some of these you have to unzip. So you just wait a little bit and then when it's done you should have a new folder. Go back to it with some more. You can't really see it. Let me move it over here. Let's see. You have another folder with more instruments that you can choose from because it's, it's all unzipped. Um, the second thing is that so they got some pretty cool effects that's like a rep repetitious one the second thing is that there are some times when uh, you get some weird uh, weird sounds let me see see if I can find it um, okay this one sometimes you have instruments that play like grace notes I have no idea why. I don't think it's supposed to be a grace note, but some of these instruments sound like they have grace notes. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, the last thing is that sometimes these instruments have, especially in the instruments folder, they have some duplicates. And what will happen, I just made a screenshot of it. You'll get this screen pop up. It'll just say, we found multiple matches in this library. Is this OK? Just press OK, and it will load fine. Now you want to make sure that when you're unzipping those files that I'd mentioned earlier, don't unzip them with this library. You you only want to click on instruments with this library after they're unzipped because it won't actually work. Um, so that's the Vienna Symphonic Library. Um, since it's going through this EXS24, all the effects that you are familiar with, you can use through it. Like the cutoff, you can you can apply all those things. Uh, there's some great sounds in there and it's, there's just a ton of sounds for you to explore. Okay, the next one is comes from the Mo2. Now, this one and many others use what's called multi timbral instruments. So I'll load them, load them up first. I'm going to press 3 and click on multi timbral This is going to give me three multi timbral tracks. Okay, now what multi timbral tracks are is if you click on this arrow, you can see that they all have the same core audio. Instrument 3 is the same core audio with different MIDI channels. The MIDI channels are what changing. If you go up to the one up here, that is a that and this one have different core audio. But with this one, when you have multi timbral, they all have the same core audio with just different MIDI channels. So what happens is I load up this next one, which is the um, Ethno, and all three of these now have loaded up. If you can see, all three of them have loaded up Ethno. Okay, the beauty about this is that you can use many instruments through this one ethno library. And they all are stored right here. And these are all your MIDI channels. 
So to load up an instrument, you just double click right here. You can find them from geography or or through the instrument. Let's let's find the Australian didgeridoo. Just double click it. And you're ready to go. How about a jaw harp? Now those are Australian instruments. They have all kinds of ethnic drums, flutes, harmonics. Um, just an amazing supply of, of great ones. So let's go now to the loops. We're going to pick the didgeridoo loop. Now what you do here is double click. Now make sure this thing is turned off or it will keep playing. And if you want to like, keep it off while you're not doing anything, press this lock button. And so that it only plays when you press down the keys. Now this thing right here, the numbers up here are the octaves. So those are the octaves. The ones down here are the dynamics, forte or piano. So okay, we got our loop ready. Now what we can do is we can load up some more stuff in the other MIDI channels. Let's load up something um, from Asia. Oh, and the thing is, this is this track is highlighted, so we have to go to the second track that has the MIDI channel two for this MIDI channel two to play. And that's there you go. Okay, let's click on the next one and we'll pick some drums. You gotta click on that so it turns it off so it's not constantly playing. And when I press it down, then it'll play. Okay, so now we're ready to record. All you gotta do is press record. Okay, now let's go to this one. Okay, it can be kind of cool. the The neat thing about this, the thing that the reason why this is so useful is because this will save you space. Maybe not; it doesn't matter so much on the ethno, but things like east west, it really makes a big difference. It just saves space instead of having three or eight or sixteen of these ethno libraries open. You only have one, and you have all the sounds coming through it, so it saves a lot on the space. Um, just when you when you're using multi temporal instruments, be aware of this number, the MIDI channel, how that how that's changing, and how the core audio is staying the same. You can find it in here, um, and you can search these instruments. You can search the loops. Um, uh, just mess around with some of these. You can change instead of this being MIDI channel three, you can change it to two, just for organizational purposes or whatever you want. Um, all the rest of this is just effects. So you have the amplitude, the volume ADSR, the filter ADSR. Um, you have your f normal filter cutoff resonance, your your uh, pitch bends, your EQ, your global volume, your uh, reverb over here. So you can pick all these reverbs. Your LFOs right here. Uh, we're going to go over some of these more effects later on. Um, the over the the major ones. So this is the mode two. Okay, now let's load up another set of three this is going to be the other mode two this is going to be the mode two symphonic instrument now this one employs multi timbral instruments just the same notice take a look here uh, this is core audio three channels one midi channel one two and three core audio two midi channel one two and three so you can see how these are all the same and these are all the same and they all load up the Mode 2 symphonic instrument. So all you gotta do is double click here, pick whatever uh, instrument you want, and you're ready to go. If you want to need channel 2, double click, and you're ready to go. Now make sure you click down here to get the, the piano, because that is what is MIDI channel 2. And then for the third one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This will uh, this will um, mute your tracks, um, and it looks like you can have up to 64 MIDI channels. It's pretty pretty mind-boggling 
for all this room on this one. Um, symphonic instrument has a lot of orchestral, decent orchestral instruments. Um, as you can see here, all the rest of this stuff is just effects. You have your volume, ADSR, your glide, your global volume. Um, you have your filter, ADSR, your normal filter with all its parameters, your EQ, your pitch bend, and your reverb, and your LFO over here. So that's the Motu Symphonic Instrument. Okay, the next one is the Motu Mach 5 II. Now this one also has uh, multi-timbral instruments, as you see down here. These are all your options. Um, works the same exact way. Now the way you you upload instruments this is how you do it. You double click right here. Now you want to go to applications, and usually it doesn't load up anything, so you have to kind of click away, then click back to Macintosh. So the flow goes from Macintosh to applications. and then from applications to sound library applications and then mode 2 Mach 5 uh, library and then right here you have four packages you gotta unzip. I'll unzip this one you just double click on it and it's gonna unzip them right here and then from here this is where you have all your instruments so you have you, you, could, you have those four packages you have to unzip you have to do it every time um, let's pick the harp glissando double click and you're ready to go Oh, okay. Uh, here's here's re here's why it's not playing. If I press down, you can see how it's playing in this box. This is the MIDI channel two. So all you gotta do, for some reason, this this thing is on MIDI channel two. It should be on one. And now it's fixed. So remember, make sure you keep track of where the MIDI channels are. So here you have a little visual of what notes are play are playable. The uh, these ones are the ones that you can actually play. It shows a little visual of the, of the notes. Um, and the rest of it is just all um, effects. So you have your filters right here, cutoff resonance. Uh, you have your pitch, your panning. You have your LFO right here, your envelope that you can load up various envelopes. Uh, you can use ADSR, you can use LFOs, or all kinds of things. Up here you have your master volume, your pitch bend, um, and you have your effects right here where you can put in um, you can put in reverb, double click it, you got your reverb, delay, uh, flanger, chorus, phasers, all these great things. Uh, so this is the Mach 5, it's got some great sounds in here. Uh, just that much is, is will give you a, a lot of material to work on. Um, so that those are the first four instruments. Next we're going to go over to the east-west. I'm going to change computers real quick so I can work on the normal computer. And so we'll see you then. Okay, bye-bye. All right, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be a lot, a lot of information. I uh, hope I'll try and get as much information as we can. Um, but just understand that I can't possibly talk about all of the things that I have seen on on tutorials in, in just a short a short hour. So I'll go over the most important things I can, and uh, the rest you gotta you gotta watch. Just go out there and start watching tutorials. Um, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is the east west and then we'll talk about the choirs. Uh, East-West are the um, are the best instruments that I've ever used uh, in terms of orchestral sounds. Uh, these sounds are amazing. Um, so if you want to make really realistic orchestral sounds, this is the one to go to.